Hello, dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And I have uh, just a little to talk about this morning, on this morning of glorious incoming light, uh, with regard to an astral story I've heard off and on, and uh, the power of the objects that we keep around us. And um, so... First, I'd like to say that I think that this story is symbolic rather than actual. So here's the astral story. Um, first, I'd like to talk a little about the size of, of, of a man's phallus or, or penis. Um, you know, there are all different sizes, I guess. At least that's what I've read. And I suspect that for men who, who are beyond the range of like in the middle uh, size of a, of, of a phallus, that, that they run into difficulties with regard to social societal expectations, whether whether they're in the in the range of rather large or long or the range of rather small, and so it, it, it's an interesting thing the idea of what is the norm, you know, and how society views that. Uh, it's it's like a totally fabricated and made up thing. And yet, um, and yet, by not fitting the norm of society, we fall into all kinds of, of trouble on the, on the astral plane. Because, because people say things unconsciously, you know. They, they say things unconsciously and judge other people by their appearances. So that's my take on the notion of, of the size of a person's penis. Um, now, so that's the beginning of the, the, the story, like the background. So here is the astral story. Uh, there's, there was a leader who was wonderful in all respects and, and greatly loved by his followers, who had many excellent soul qualities, but he had one physical difficulty, and that was that his penis was small. Okay, And he spoke to his trusted followers and told them before he passed on that he wanted them to remove that penis before he was taken to the undertaker and that they should keep it and that it would confer to them great soul powers. Okay, And so, in this fictional story, the penis was kept in a pickle jar in, in the room of the person that, that was considered to be most worthy of this honor in this group, okay? Um, now, what would happen if that were actually true, okay? First, I'd like to say that, that this portion of the person's anatomy contained within it, obviously contained within it, great soul wounding, okay? Because in his mind, it would have represented the one quality in which he failed to live up to his very high spiritual standards, okay? So, in this pickle jar, this fictitious pickle jar would be the greatest soul wounding of a great leader, okay? Now, what would this do to the person that, that held the jar, say, kept it in their room or something like that, all right? So my, my astral story goes like this, that, that the leader said that the person who, who, worthy person who kept this memento in his room uh, would, would always ha uh, enjoy the wisdom and the astral channeling and the um, leadership presence. All the wonderful qualities of this leader would be with them. In other words, this leader would always live on and convey through the words of the person holding the pickle jar would convey the very depth of the teachings of this person. But what would really happen, okay? Would it be that or would it be some other unexpected outcome? My thoughts on this are, that, are like this. You know, we've, we've discussed and read Arthur Powell's information about the desire elemental. 
which is uh, actually a separate being from us, he says, that helps us to stay on earth by always having uh, a pull towards the, our animal instincts and down towards the earth, okay? And, and in a normal person's lifetime, when they pass on, <clears throat> this desire elemental leaves them. And after time, this desire elemental leaves them. Now, you know, there's a, a theory in the, in the East, in the Eastern religions, which I agree to also, to the effect that when we pass on, the very best way to, to deal with the, the physical body that is still on Earth is to cremate it. And the, and the theory on, in the East is that the longer that it takes to, to dis disperse the like atoms of the physical body, the longer will be a person's stay in a kind of earthbound mesmer mesmeric state on the astral plane. Now, one of the reasons I agree with this is that um, I've walked through graveyards and I found um, I found ghosts talk to me that are still like mesmerized and stuck to the, to the gravesite because the physical body has not yet decomposed. And so I uh, agree with the Eastern concept that it's better to simply help that process along by um, cremating the physical body. That's what I think. So, and from that, here's a wild theory. Were that astral story to be true, could it be that the desire elemental is staying with that, that, that penis in that pickle jar? Could it be that instead of channeling in the great presence of, of, of a teacher, it's instead enhancing the desire elemental of the person that's in charge of taking care of the pickle jar? Could it be, in fact, that, that it's channeling in uh, those kinds of um, uh, desire world uh, qualities from all over Earth, uh, like the desire for sexuality, um, the desire to kill, the fear of being killed, uh, the desire to take over the world, you know, these lower, the, the desire for, for money, the willingness to, to, to kill for money. Uh, in other words, what we call the baser instincts, could it be, because a desire elemental all by itself clinging to, to uh, like a, um, you know, just a piece of a corpse, that would be, you know, that would be, uh, it would be untempered by the intellect of a human being. In other words, it would be free to pursue those instincts which are uniquely its own, you know. And if a person uh, that, that held such a memento were to, like, um, idolize, or like, how do you say it, um, to look up to that which was in the pickle jar, then that person would, their own desire body would become coarser and coarser. And if they were the leader, the subsequent leader of that group, I can foresee all kinds of terrible things happening with regard to the karma of the group and so forth. So what I'm saying here is, first, it's a good idea to cremate the entire body. Second, it's not a good idea to keep any uh, mementos around of people who have passed on. If it, if it, what it is is like preserved body cells, much better to cremate, you know. And, and that will allow the soul of the person not to be tormented by being earthbound because that then would that teacher would be, uh, or some fractal of him would be kept earthbound and tortured by what the desire elemental was doing. Okay, so not only is it good for the, for the person who passed on, but it's also good for the people that are either friends or followers or family or whoever who are left behind not to be tortured by ghosts, you know? <laughs> ghosts who need to pursue their own like soul evolution as time goes on. And so, 
And so the other thing I think to be learned from this, this astral story, which is clearly fictional, is um, it really matters what we keep in our presence, especially in our bedrooms and our meditation rooms and kitchens, I think. Well, all over the house. You know, it's very important, the energy of the things that we keep around us. That's why a lot of people turn to crystals and, and, and being outdoors as much as possible, you know, because there's a very high energy outdoors, you know. Not to keep things that, that, are, that are in energy are, are sad or um, are like angry or that make us just feel any negative emotion whatsoever, even fear of death, you know. Whatever it is, why not have flowers? beautiful bright lights in the inside why not have high spiritual objects and crystals around so so that's what I think you know about that one astral story and um, you know I, in the East many people just to let you know in the in the East many people w worship the the sexual organs in a kind of an exalted state of sacredness such as I think it's called the 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 yoni, and uh, I forget, the lingam, yeah. And so, but in these cases, what they usually use are stone, not human remains. So, so if you're of that disposition to worship this, the primal drives, or to understand that the, that the nature of life on earth flows from uh, sacred masculine and sacred feminine, then, then why not use those sorts of symbols rather than you know something sad that's that's how i feel about it so god bless you all what an amazing story huh god bless you and keep you so this is a postscript on human remains um this has to do with this is the only other thing I can think of. Shrunken heads. Um, I know it's an art kind of situation, an art object situation, and like cultural significance and so forth. But I do feel that shrunken heads, if you happen to run across any or have any in your collection, it'd be a lot better to um, cremate them as well. Uh, because the spirits of the dead uh, we'll stick around for, for situations like that and uh, Shrunken Head was probably belonged to someone who was murdered probably maybe an enemy of the person who cut the head off and so uh, you would be in a situation of animosity with a, the spirit world when one person, yeah, one ghost is all upset and angry like that, or even vengeful, uh, other ghosts will cluster around that have similar soul signatures. And so it can get very uncomfortable for people to keep human remains around. And I think there are laws about it too. I just don't know what the laws are. I recall reading one time about someone who found just a, somebody's finger. They found somebody's finger, and there was and there was an assumption that the person had died. I guess and they, they, they went to great trouble to cremate that finger, and, and not a bad idea, you know, not a bad idea at all. The extent of our involvement with the astral world is hard to calculate, but uh, I think it's good to attract to ourselves. Restful influences from the astral world, from the higher astral world, like nature spirits or devas or like that, you know, happy spirits. If you're going to be doing any uh, astral attracting at all, so it just goes to show that the that the remains of people who passed on are, are are probably not a situation to find ourselves with in our homes. I have no doubt that others might have others' points of view, but what are we for on this earth but to stand there and to be ourselves and to know who we are? And so, that's my feeling.